and they're going to have to have somebody who can handle the basketball and also push pace. But you have Sedona Prince in the starting lineup. That size will be, be big. No pun intended for the Oregon Ducks. Also to note, Jazz Shelley did not warm up for Oregon, not available tonight. Oregon will start out with the basketball. Maddie Shear, number 23 in that white jersey, takes it. In South Dakota, they're a man-to-man -man team and already calls a turnover for the Oregon Ducks. But this is a good defensive South Dakota team. They have been tops in the summit in defense the last several years. Let's take a look at our Capital One starting lineups. We told you about Hannah Shervin, but Lynn Corgable is also a pretty good scorer, averaging 15 points a game. Corn Gable, Lamb, Shervin. That's the big three for South Dakota. And Hannah Shervin is the first to hit. I talked about Shervin being 6'3", not trying to overdo it with her back to the basket against the size of Oregon, but use her face-up game. She did in that first possession. And look at her defense, too, on Prince. Got the ball back for the Coyotes, taken away. Sheer misses the layup. Aaron Boley on the putback. Bowley's role has changed this season. Really gotten more aggressive on the board. She has more twos this year than she had last season. The Capital One starting lineups for Oregon. They went big with this lineup. We're getting to see Aaron Bowley, Sedona Prince, and Niara Saboli all out there on the floor together. That's a lot, 6-7, down low, Sedona Prince. And this is Sedona Prince's first full season playing healthy. So that's a good sign for Oregon to have her be productive right away. Both Saboli and Prince have battled injuries in their career, making their first NCAA tournament appearances. Liv Corn Gable got a hand on it. Shot clock winding down. Prince, beautiful. We're gonna have a shootout tonight. Both these teams, they're hot. This is Maddie Kroll to the elbow. Try the high-low, but Niara Saboli takes it. Look at her leading to break the speed, the layup, the bucket. Love it. That's what Kelly Graves has been looking for. They've been able to spend some time in really working on getting everybody's roles defined, the chemistry together. Much improved in the start of this game. It'll be Oregon ball. But you check out Niara Saboli. She gets the steal and then handles it like a guard. Just the composure all the way, coast to coast for the finish. Yeah, Oregon, even this late in the season, has been trying to find that chemistry. And of course, losing Tahina Pow Pow didn't help either. Another bucket for Saboli, but they still have that belief that they can put together a run, and it starts right here. Well, this is like the Oregon team of old. Still score, come down, score fast, because you've got options all around the court. Aaron Bowley. Don Plitzewhite has got to call timeout. 11 points for the hot shooting Oregon Ducks. Oregon wanted to come in and make a statement in this tournament. It hit the reset button. So far, it looks good. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Dos Equis, a most interesting beer. Please enjoy responsibly.
Well, after last season, when Oregon thought they had that chance to make a run for a national championship, huge losses. Sabrina Ionescu, Satu Sabali, and Ruthie Hebert, all top eight picks in the WNBA draft. They left huge voids that Oregon had to fill, and they had to do it with some new pieces. Well, what a start it has been so far in this game. Well, it definitely has, and that has really come from, you look at Bowley, Prince, and Sobley. Those are the three bigs that right away in this offense, they've gotten the offense clicking for the Oregon Ducks. Oregon has made six straight field goals. They're on an 11-0 run. We talked about those first round draft picks. Also, Minion Moore was another guard for Oregon that graduated and left from last year's team that was making a run for a national championship. Sabali, just a little bit short. South Dakota's got to regroup here and stop turning the ball over. I know the size of Oregon is tough, especially with this bigger lineup out on the floor. Well, Oregon is changing up their defenses. They'll go from a matchup zone to a man-to-man. -man. Been tough for, for South Dakota to get into a rhythm. Going to be a tough pass inside taken away by Liv Corn Gable. And she traveled. Well, all four NIT quarterfinals come to the ESPN Networks Thursday, beginning with Mississippi State and Richmond at 6 Eastern on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. You can visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. We have had some amazing games in this NCAA championship today. Went all chalk yesterday, but several upsets brewing on this Monday. We've seen an 11, a 12, and a 13 seed all advance. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be interesting. Wednesday as well. The competition just will continue to get tighter and tighter as this tournament progresses. Winner of this game moves on to face Georgia in the second round. Corn Gable elevates. Finally, there is a bucket for South Dakota. I don't know how she was able to see the basket over Sedona Prince. Wow. Corn Gable, one of those big three, along with Chloe Lamb and Hannah Shervin, that South Dakota needs to step up. All oh, the pressure, though. Can't leave Prince that open. Yeah, Shervin left the basket to go get on that trap, but nobody covered home, protecting, protecting the rim. South Dakota coming off back-to-back -back Summit tournament titles. They were able to take down Omaha in the final, only gave up 43 points. You now Oregon in a 1-2-2, or that matchup zone. That's Chloe Lamb. And Hannah Shervin is fouled. So Dona Prince got the start in this game. Check out what she's done in starts versus coming off the bench. Her points go up. Her field goal percentage goes up to almost 60%. Kelly Graves might try to maybe reconsider. She should be in the starting lineup more often. Well, she's three for three tonight, so that's pretty good. That foul was called on Sedona Prince, just her first, but she will take a seat. Shervin at the free throw line. Anna Shervin has six of South Dakota's eight points. Well, not having Pow Pow on the floor, Taylor Mikesell, who is a three-point shooter, is having to handle the basketball quite a bit. They've also used Maddie Shear there tonight. Foley. Yeah, we talked to Kelly Graves about Aaron Bowley 
taking more twos. And he said, we might need to look at her getting back outside because she is such a great three-point shooter. She shoots about 38% from three. Stolen away by Mike Sell. Six turnovers now for the Coyotes. And there's a foul down low as Liv Corngable is trying to battle inside. That's the first on Corngable. Oh, and Hannah Shervin hit the deck really hard. Hannah Shervin battles in. Oh, and then when she falls, her head hits the floor. Taking a look at this to see if there was anything extra. Niara Saboli is also having the trainers look at her over on the Oregon bench. I think she took that, you saw the elbow to her face. I don't think I saw anything outside of just going for the basketball. I, I didn't either. I think it was just a hustle, you know, hustle play going after the basketball. They can go and look and see if they need to assess anything extra, an intentional foul, a disqualifying foul, but nothing extra on that play, just players trying to scrap for the ball and got tangled up. The ruling on the floor stands, incidental contact. Yeah, so exactly what we saw on the review, but always good to double check. We'll try to keep an eye on Niara Saboli. I mean, she has been through so much during her career. She missed her first two seasons, missed out on the chance of playing with her sister Satsu at Oregon due to injuries, a couple of knee injuries. Had the initial one and then re-injured it the summer later. Yeah, she even talked about Question whether or not she wanted to play, and then time away, she regained and found that love of the game. You see Oregon again switching up back into a zone. Hustle from Sydney Parrish, the freshman out of Indiana. Yeah, these freshmen for Oregon, they show no fear. They come in with a toughness and aggressiveness. That was a great attack by Sydney Parrish. Oregon had the number one recruiting class coming in, this freshman class. Sydney Parrish has given them almost seven points per game. She was a five star, the highest in this class, number eight overall. Of course, a McDonald's All American because all of the freshmen coming in were. Nina Pow Pow, everyone was excited about too. Unfortunately, we will not see her in this game. Probably won't see her in the tournament. She's dealing with a foot injury, has missed their last two games. But what a talent she has. And just wait for her future at Oregon. Well, if there's anybody that develops point guards, it's Kelly Graves. When you look at what he got out of Sabrina Ionescu in her career here at Oregon.
South Dakota has come out and just struggled against the size. It's caused so many turnovers. They already have eight turnovers here in the first quarter. Shervin tries to kick. You were talking about the freshman point guards. Yeah, Kelly Graves has had a few good ones. Look at Courtney Vandersloot and Sabrina Ionescu. These are their freshman numbers. And then Tahina Pow Pow this season. The future is bright. Yeah, I hope that her injury isn't lingering and that we will be able to see her full, full go for the next three seasons. Foley bucket. 10 straight points. Oregon dominating here in the opening frame, shooting 77%. Sedona Prince using that size, those long arms, and Hannah Shervin had nowhere to go. Sedona Prince is 6'7", and Sedona Prince just has to go straight up. Shervin's got no shot. Taylor Chavez will check in. She was another one that was questionable today, but good to see her out on the floor. And Kelly Graves was happy that Chavez was able to go because she's missed the previous two NCAA tournaments. So you know this is a happy spot for him to see her be able to check in the game today. Oregon can take the last shot of the quarter. They won't get the bucket, but still, Oregon has scored 10 straight points. A monster lead for the Oregon Ducks. Thursday before this tournament even started, these images appeared of the discrepancies between the differences between the setups at the men's and women's tournament. We saw several athletes tweet about those. One of those was Oregon's Sedona Prince, who got a lot of traffic. The NCAA was made aware of that. They made changes, and here's what she had to say. Guess what, guys? We got a weight room, yeah! We got a ton more dumbbells. Look at that, look at all these racks for squats and whatever you want to do. We got a bunch of bands. Look at this guy. And we got some equipment. Hey, yo, thank you NCAA for listening to us. We appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for real. Yay, guys. Well, shout out to Sedona for, for not being afraid and several of the other athletes to, to reach out, to speak their mind, to when they see something that isn't right. Um, and props to the NCAA for making the change. But as we've talked about, Carolyn, it's it's way more than about a weight room. Well, but because of the weight room, it starts the conversation. So it has to start somewhere. It brought awareness of the discrepancy and that now coaches and student athletes are speaking up and really demanding that things are being done more equitably for the women and the men. So far, this has been all Oregon. It's good to see Niara Sabali back on the court. Our own Holly Rowe found her way into this game. She is just everywhere. She did let us know that Sabali had her jaw checked out but was ready to go back in. She is okay after a couple of players just scrapping for the ball, nothing extra. But the defense for Oregon has been so impressive. Seven straight misses now for South Dakota. The offense just not there, shooting 21%. Well, just the length is causing problems for South Dakota. Taylor might sell all the way to the rack. Don Plitzy-White talked to us about how she was concerned about the length 
of Oregon, and it has caused South Dakota a lot of problems. And Oregon with their bigger lineup tonight, putting Sedona Prince, Viara Saboli, and Aaron Boley all in the starting lineup. Well, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 begins Saturday on CBS and TBS, or you can stream the games on the March Madness Live app from anywhere. For more information on game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. How about the Oregon men knocking off Iowa? Yeah, taking down the two-seed Oregon, that seven-seed, of course, they advanced to the first round. Talking about on the men's side, because VCU was not able to compete due to COVID protocols, but Sweet 16 for the Oregon men for four of the last five tournaments. Coyotes just need to see a basket go through. Well, the other thing that the defense of Oregon, what it has done is it, it has sped up South Dakota. They've not been able to get into their natural flow. And watching them, especially playing in the Summit League tournament, they were like a well-oiled machine. They played at their own pace. Oregon has them playing a little bit faster. They played sped up. Eleven straight misses for South Dakota. This is Chloe Lamb. Ran right into Prince. Eight steals now for the Ducks. Shervin. Shervin gives up two or three inches, but she's battling inside with the bigs of Oregon. But the Oregon Ducks, they're in control right now. The NCAA Women's Championship, presented by Capital One, is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. NCAA Championship continues on Tuesday, starting at 3 Eastern on ESPN2. We'll see South Florida and one of those one seeds, that would be NC State, followed by Iowa and Kentucky over on ESPNU at 3.30. Then at 5, Michigan and Tennessee on ESPN2. 5.30, Georgia Tech and West Virginia on ESPNU. Man, Georgia Tech gave us the most exciting game yesterday because it went chalk, but they were able to get the win in overtime. Today, a totally different story. We've had all kinds of upsets. That's what makes it fun. You don't want to sit there and go, okay, I know this team's going to win. The exciting part about sport is the unpredictability. You've got a 13, 12, and 11 seed that are advancing. Well, this has been all Oregon so far in this game. The Ducks shooting 73% from the field. South Dakota just shooting 15%. Kelly Graves talked about their practices, talked about the reset, finding the chemistry, finding the rhythm. So far in this first half, it looks like they found what they were looking for. Oh, they've tried several different ways to get everybody on the same page this year because it's a lot when you lose stars like Sabrina Ionescu, Ruthie Hebert, and of course Satu Saboli to learn your new roles and how these teams fit together. At one point during the season after they lost to UCLA back on February 19th, they had a live scrimmage the very next day and then ended up playing. After that, they beat USC. That's a three-day span of two games and one inter-squad scrimmage. Well, and after that inter-squad scrimmage, it was Niara Sobley who really found her voice and spoke up and really had some tough conversations with her team. I think message delivered 
everybody getting on the same page. And you can see that it has, it takes a while. It's kind of like your golf swing. You go get instruction, the very next day, it's not gonna be perfect. But after a few days of practicing, then it all seems to start to come together. Oregon really felt like coming into this tournament after losing in the quarterfinals of the Pac-12 to Oregon State in a really close game, that they could make a run, that they could regroup and make a run in this tournament. Well, you got to believe the players that came to Oregon saw the success that the players had last season. They want to carry it on. Now, it's a lot easier to watch it than it is to actually be in the shoes to get it done, but they want to experience and be part of the success this team had last year. Two fouls on Sedona Prince. She sits down with six points. Bowley. Bowley alone has outscored South Dakota. She has 12 points. She's hey, Bowley, stay outside that. She didn't stay outside that three-point line. Let it fly. South Dakota just can't get the ball in the basket. It has been 17 straight points by Oregon. turnover from Oregon and they have come out on fire offensively 71% from the field the just the decisions that they have made the crisp passing has been really good so far except for that last turnover Straight misses now for South Dakota. The misses for South Dakota, they have one offensive rebound. They're not getting any second chance opportunities. There's going to be an offensive foul called on Oregon. Well, coming up at halftime on the AT&T 5G in the studio, the Troy A&M game. Wow. Almost able to knock off the Aggies. I'll have recaps of that, plus upsets today. We went chalk yesterday. Not the case on this Monday. Maria, Rebecca, and Andy have got you covered. That's coming up at the half. I think Texas A&M escaped one there. There was a foul called that could have been an over and back. But Texas A&M went to the free throw line. They were able to seal the deal. They were lucky to advance. Right, so we'll see Texas A&M and Iowa State on Wednesday in the second round. Winner of this game, Oregon and South Dakota moves on to face Georgia. Georgia, a team that really exciting right now. They made a run through the SEC tournament, made it to the SEC tournament championship game after knocking off that Texas A&M team. Q Morrison playing like a woman on a mission and if you want to see a player that plays with great joy because she loves the game you got to watch georgia play and look for q morrison look at the energy on the oregon bench right now you think they were behind and a Shervet. 
kicks it out to Morgan Hansen. Foley just shook off the defense. She has just taken over 15 points so far in this first half. 19 straight. And then a big stop, Lydia Giomi. going to be a foul on Giomi. Again, South Dakota is not doing a very good job. Get settled, get space, and then get into your dribble drive motion offense. A lot of times the offense for South Dakota is started before the rest of the teams down the floor. You see Kelly Graves, he calls a horns play. He wants his team now to work on their execution. Don't start just jacking up shots because you have a big lead. Under a minute to go in the half. It has been all Oregon from the get-go. They're shooting 59% from the field. South Dakota has missed its last 25 shots. And just the length. And the intensity defensively from Oregon has just been too much. Offensive foul on Mike Sell. Yugovsky stepping up and taking the charge. Maybe it'll give South Dakota a little life. They've got 18.8 seconds left in the half. They have not scored in the second quarter. The recovery of Oregon defensively on their movement has been very impressive. It's going to be a foul on Giomi. There was a little shove in the paint. South Dakota will make some substitutions. Their last points came on a free throw from Shervin back at the 314 mark in the first quarter. First point in the second quarter. I think at halftime, South Dakota's got to really discuss on patience, spacing, to be able to create ways to score. Quick shot goes up. Oregon, 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 all dominating in the first half. A 34-9 lead into the locker room as they shoot almost 60% from the field. Winner is moving on to the second round to face Georgia. Oregon up 34-9 at the half.
place. Here is the game, Oregon and South Dakota. It has been all ducks in the opening half. 34 to nine lead for Oregon. We're in the Alamo region. That's the upper left quadrant on your bracket. Stanford, the number one overall seed is in this region. Winner of our game moving on to face Georgia on Wednesday in the second round. Back with you, Courtney Lyle and national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. And wow, Oregon made a statement in that opening 20 minutes. When you get eliminated from the Pac-12 tournament and you're coming into the first game of the NCAA tournament, you want to make a statement. And that's exactly what Oregon did. Well, let's take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance, and we've got to go ahead and give it to Aaron Boley, who came out and had 15 points in the opening half. Look, this is the Duck who has the most experience and playing time in the NCAA tournament. She led the charge. She was the go-to person offensively. She was attacking the basket, but she was where she is most comfortable, and that's outside the three-point line. Three for five from three. If you're South Dakota, how do you regroup? They only scored nine points in the opening half. That's the second lowest output in an NCAA tournament game. In talking to Oregon in the locker room, or into South Dakota, I would say slow down. Don't let anybody make you play faster than you're comfortable playing. South Dakota was challenged with Oregon's size. They really disrupted them in that opening 20 minutes. 12 turnovers by South Dakota. Oregon had nine steals. Well, when your offense has been struggling, the one thing that you can hang your hat on is your defense. Then that could give a little confidence. That three-point shot right there for South Dakota could help them. The Coyotes had missed their last 25 shots before that three from Lynn Corngable. Sedona Prince by herself. Well, in order to help Hannah Shervin down low, there's got to be pressure on the passer. Otherwise, that high low is going to be there all day to Sedona Prince. Here's Shervin on the elbow. It'll stay with the Coyotes. A little life here for the Coyotes. Knocking down the three and then the bench, bringing the energy, trying to get things going for the Coyotes. Look, we had a great conversation with South Dakota's head coach, Don Plitzu-White, and she said there are some program goals that they set. Be your best, be thankful, enjoy the precious present. And they also talk about finding a way, whether it's on the court, off the court, finding a way to get things done. And you got to believe that was part of the message in the locker room. Well, in looking at it, you just have to, one, recognize the length, the size of Oregon. Now, how can you exploit that? Make the defense shift? Find the open person and then be ready to pull the trigger when the ball comes to you. Maddie Kroll knocks down the three. If you want to look at a bright spot for South Dakota, they only let Oregon score nine points in that second quarter after giving up 25 in the first quarter. Out of bounds off of South Dakota. Five seconds on the shot clock. But the toughness of South Dakota, they are not defle de deflated. When you see the intensity, they are battling even though they are outsized. The Bowley, man, she is having a game. Aaron Bowley averages 10 points a game. She has 17. And a Shervin. And that's how South Dakota's going to have to score. It's got to be a face-up game. You're not going to be able to battle with the bigs with your back to the basket. She had missed her last nine shots before that. Shervin leading South Dakota with nine of their 17. Sobley still finishing through traffic. 
Erin Bolick having herself a night in the first round. Getting it done for the Ducks. Fighting it, battling inside. Getting it done for the Ducks. The energy is not lacking for South Dakota right now. They may be down, but their bench is fired up. Macy Giebert throwing down the air guitar as South Dakota has come out with more energy, even after scoring just nine points in the opening half. They're feeling the vibe of the 605. Well, what does that mean? South Dakota only has one area code. It's 605, and they're feeling it. They get so much support from back home during the regular season, during their conference tournament that Coach Don Plitzewitz made these t-shirts up. You can see him with the family and friends in the stands. They're remembering all that support they've got back in the 605. Don said that they are like celebrities back in South Dakota. She can go to the grocery store and people recognize her and they are following this team and know the success of the Coyotes. And Oregon has come out strong too. They're five for five to start the third quarter. Hannah yeah. Shervin wanted it. The difference I see between the first half and the second half is that composure. South Dakota is playing at their own speed. They were playing at Oregon speed. Oregon had them sped up in the first half. Now, South Dakota has taken a deep breath and settled in. We'll tune in Friday at 1 Eastern on ESPN2 when the Men's Ice Hockey Championship continues in Bridgeport with the regional semifinals between Wisconsin and Bemidji State. For more, you can visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. going to stay with Oregon. And there's going to be a foul called before Oregon could inbound the ball on Matty Kroll. When you watch the screening action for Oregon, the movement to spread out, and then that, that, that flex cut for Sedona Prince cutting down on the baseline. Sedona Prince and Niara Saboli both playing in their first NCAA tournament games. Their first couple of seasons of college basketball, they spent rehabbing injuries. Sabali misses. Meanwhile, South Dakota has already scored 13 points in this third quarter. They had nine points in the first half. Shervin. But the strategy for South Dakota is what they're working on now, part of their dribble drive is penetrate in, make the defense collapse, and now kicking out instead of trying to score over the sides in the paint. Skip pass over to Sydney Parrish. Maddie Shear. Keep an eye on the battle inside. Smaller players are ending up on Sedona Prince. 
and they are really working her knees down below. They're almost like boxing her out as she's trying to post up. Little life from South Dakota, the Coyotes, 13 points here in the third quarter. So the Women's NCAA Championship continues Tuesday night on ESPN and ESPN2. Taking a look at these matchups at 7 p.m. Oregon State will take on South Carolina. Virginia Tech will take on Baylor. That one will be on ESPN2. Syracuse UConn at 9, along with Oklahoma State and Stanford. Of course, you can see all these games on the ESPN app. And we have already seen all four finalists for the Naismith Player of the Year in action. These are the numbers they put up in the first round. And Carolyn, you and I are going to get to call that South Carolina-Oregon State game tomorrow. Aaliyah Boston had 20 points, 18 rebounds. I would like to also point out that nine of those rebounds were offensive rebounds. That's a good point to make because she was all over the glass. But it was the inside post game for South Carolina across the board because Victoria Saxton had 20 points also for South Carolina in their first round. Yeah, we talked to Aaliyah Boston after that game and I asked her about Victoria Saxton and she goes, isn't she a queen? I said, absolutely queen. she is, a queen. Well, Oregon has been the queen of this game because they're shooting 60% from the field, only allowed nine points in the first half. They want that spot in the second round against Georgia. They came out, I mean, on a mission to start this game. It started with their defense, deflections, running in transition, moving the ball, shooting the basketball in rhythm. It's an impressive start to this ball game. And it looks it looked much more together and in the flow than we've seen them. Remember, they came into this game having lost five of their last six. Sherman with the steal and score. Well, you see Kelly Graves and he's talked about when you look at their schedule and even the close games that they have lost, and he said we struggle with closing out games. Why is that? Youth, inexperience, and there, Sedona Prince gets called for an offensive foul. That's her third foul. Well, Hannah Shervin has frustrated her because you look, Shervin is attacking the legs of Sedona Prince, and when Sedona, when Sedona comes in to post up, Shervin was in, had the spot first, and that's why the official called it the offensive foul. Cruel is short. Oregon went with this bigger lineup to start the game, meaning they went with Aaron Boley, Sedona Prince, and Sobley. What do you think about that group to start a game? That's 6-2, 6-5, 6-7 front line. That's impressive. And these are not just slow post players that have to stay on the block. They can play face up and around the basket. They can defend away from the basket as well. Possession arrow pointing to South Dakota. It's interesting and fun to see the energy that the coaches and the players have to manufacture because of the limited attendance that is allowed into the arenas for this first and second round. Yeah, just basically player pass list only. Family member, friends of the players and coaching staffs. We'll get to see a little bit more fans when we get to this round of the Sweet 16. That's going to be a foul on Mike Sell. There's Chloe Lamb. Lamb was the tournament MVP of the Summit Conference Tournament. 
That's South Dakota won. Everybody kind of expected it to be South Dakota and South Dakota State, but Omaha made a amazing run through that conference tournament all the way to the championship game before losing to South Dakota in the final. Well, Carrie Banks in her first year at Omaha makes it all the way to that championship game. That's an impressive start, first year as a head coach. Talk about setting the bar high. Expectations, don't set them too high too soon. Saboli working hard on Shervin. I love her body control, her footwork. She can finish so well with both hands. Well, the NCAA Women's Championship continues. We mentioned the Sweet 16 when we'll get a little more fans in the stands. It's March 27th and 28th. We've got you covered all the way through the championship game Sunday, April 4th at 6 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. South Dakota has gone back to trying to score against the size inside. You've got to find your opportunities facing up. Well, Hannah Shervin trying to will South Dakota back in this game. She has 13 points, 10 rebounds. 21st career double-double. Corn Gable. Maddie Shear overshot the pass to Niara Saboli. South Dakota has outscored Oregon 20 to 16 in the third quarter. Baseline in and out for Chloe Lamb. Now this is how South Dakota wanted to have started this game, but the intimidation, the intensity that Oregon started with, it was just hard for South Dakota to settle in. Oregon still shooting 57% from the field. Ten minutes to go. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Oregon trying to do the same thing here, Maria. We've had some notable upsets today after we went higher seeds, won all the games yesterday. Not the case today. Belmont picking up their first NCAA tournament win. Wright State did the same thing. And Alabama out of the SEC, they're back in the big dance for the first time since 99 and got a win. Jordan Lewis had a good game for then 32 points for Jordan Lewis. And Northwestern, after the win, Joe McEwen danced for our studio crew. He had some moves <laughs> like Jagger. Look, you're in the big dance, you gotta dance. This has been Oregon's ball game from the start. They held South Dakota to nine points in the first half. The offense has been better in the second half, though, for South Dakota. Liv Corn Gable, but they're still in a deep hole. Yeah, but their intensity, South Dakota, has turned up. And this is not going to be a team that just folds their tents to go home. They're going to compete to the very end. 
Out of bounds, off of Oregon, it'll be Coyote's ball. You watch the anticipation there with the steal and then off and running, getting down in transition. Best way to score and not have to face the heights before the defense gets set. South Dakota did outscore Oregon in the third quarter, 20 to 16. And that's the long arms of 6'7", Sedona Prince. Well, I just don't understand why South Dakota keeps trying to go down low where Prince is. They've got capable shooters face up on the perimeter. Turnover, Oregon. That's two in a row. Three in a row, and Coach Don Plitt Zuwait, she just tell her team, look, you just have to chip away, and you want to by the six, five minute mark. If you can get it to single digits, you're in striking, you're in striking distance. So you don't have to get it all at once. Just get a stop, then go score. Well, the officials are gonna talk about this. And yeah, it will be Oregon ball. Aaron Boley has been the scoring leader for the Ducks tonight. 17 points, she averages 10. You know, an area of concern. Area of concern for Oregon has been closing out games. So when you're starting this fourth quarter, three turnovers. Kelly Graves wants to see his team really tighten things up, play the way that they did to start this game off in the first quarter. Oregon six for six from the free throw line tonight. Now they're bringing a 2-2-1 two, two, zone back to a 2-3. Oh, good ball movement. Serve it, serve it. Through contact. We're just passing underneath the size, the terrific bounce passes. You don't see too many people using that nowadays. And that's the fourth foul on Sedona Prince. Well, and Kelly Graves is going to leave her on the floor. No, he's not. I <laughs> see Aaron Bowley going to the table. Chavez for three. <laughs> Anna Shervin, number 34 in red, has been their leading scorer with 15 points, 11 rebounds today. And she has had her hands full battling with, if it wasn't Sedona Prince, it was Niara Sobley, just two big size post players inside for Oregon. That's a two. And 
that's going to be the fifth foul on Sedona Prince. You've got to credit that to the it's senior experience, Hannah, Sh Hannah Shervin knowing Sedona Prince has got four fouls. She goes in and posts up. Her team knows it as well. Gets the ball inside to Shervin in order to draw that fifth foul. 12 points, seven rebounds, three assists for Sedona Prince, and her night is done. Her first NCAA tournament game of her career. Impressive with having her in the starting lineup. Really did a terrific job, especially the way the game started off. The intensity, the defensive presence, the deflections. Oregon in control with six minutes to go. Day of the tournament, we've seen some great performances. Earlier today, Peck, we saw Ashley Jones put up 33 points. That's an Iowa State NCAA tournament record. Jordan Lewis had 32 in Alabama's win over North Carolina. All right. Paisley Harding, everybody's been talking about her. This BYU team was able to come out and upset Rutgers. She was a part of that. And then Angel Baker, of course, big time for Wright State, 26 points. 12 rebounds. The upsets have been happening on this Monday. Well, this is the time for stars to rise. And some of these players, maybe you haven't heard about, haven't gotten as much publicity. They're getting their time to shine now in the NCAA tournament. The winner of our game is moving on to face Georgia on Wednesday in the second round. Texas A&M had a scare earlier today. They almost lost to Troy. Troy was so close in knocking off the two-seed Texas A&M, but they do survive. They'll face the Iowa State team that was led by Ashley Jones with those 33 points. South Dakota calls it a five-second call. Oregon couldn't inbound the basketball. Liv Corn Gable, 13 points. And the Coyotes bringing some full court pressure. With an Aaron Foley sneaks behind the defense. Foley had 15 points in the first half. South Dakota only scored nine points as a team. But coming out in that third quarter, South Dakota had settled in. And now Sedona Prince not on the floor. She is fouled out of this game, so a little more space, even though Niara Saboli is a big presence down low for Oregon. But the job of Hannah Shervin didn't get any easier having to deal with Saboli down low. Speaking of which, it's just too tough because the other four perimeter players, they're high. There's no help. And that's just too big of a job for Hannah Shervin to try to guard Sobley one-on-one. Ten of those 14 points for Niara Sobley have come in the second half. Just look how Sobley can be moved around in this Oregon offense. Mike Sells pass intercepted by Kaya Watson. And it'll stay with the Coyotes because Oregon touched it last. You see Sobley really battling, getting Hannah Shervin on the high side. There's just no help. And with her size, she's 6'5". And we talked about Hannah Shervin, 
She's 6'3", the next tallest player, 5'11", for South Dakota in that starting lineup. Corn Gable, a second team all summit selection. Look, only six points to cutting it into single digits for South Dakota. Bowling, corner pocket. Bully now with 22, that puts her over a thousand at Oregon. Remember, spent one season at Notre Dame. Well, she's such a terrific scorer. Remember last season, she could stay outside beyond the three-point line because Serena Ionescu was driving in and then able to kick so many options. And she was that relief pass when it came to her, knocking down the three. She's brought that part of her game back to it today in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Sherman's second shot rolls out. She's got 18 points though and 12 rebounds tonight. Oregon goes back to the horn set. When you see Kelly Graves is warning his team to use this opportunity to execute. Well, he wants to be playing again on Wednesday and taking it further to the next weekend. And their offense has been the area that they've really needed to focus on. At 20 turnovers for Oregon tonight. South Dakota is a good defensive team. They've been one of the tops in their conference over the last several years. Well, and you can see the intensity, the physicality that South Dakota plays with. It's just the size. It's just too much to deal with going against Oregon. Count the bucket for Niara Saboli. Sobley has two players. Watson's there, but she's there a little too late. Or no, that was Maddie Krul. The first NCAA tournament game for Niara Sobley. Missed the first two seasons of her career with a knee injury. She's got 17 points. Oregon two minutes away from facing Georgia in the second round on Wednesday. You know, if Oregon is to face Georgia, they'll have to face Jenna Stady. That's got that's the size inside for Georgia. But they're also gonna have the athleticism, the excitement that Georgia brings, especially starting with Q Morrison. Yeah, Jenna Stady, 19.7 rebounds. It was interesting, though, she did not start the game against Drexel earlier today. She arrived a little bit later than the rest of the team due to an undisclosed medical reason, was told that she was going to be limited, but then was able to come out and have those 19 points. So how is she? What kind of shape is she in for Georgia? on Wednesday when these two teams face. And Georgia also has Mallory Bates, Maury Davenport that can rotate inside as well to kind of match the rotation of the size of the Oregon Ducks. Minute 49 to go. Oregon has kept that high shooting percentage up throughout this game shooting 59% from the field, 50% from three, and they've been perfect from the free throw line against South Dakota tonight. 
Yeah, I think it's been a solid game for Oregon. The only area, of course, that you got to look at is the turnovers. And the defense is good. They're going to face another tough defensive team as they go against the University of Georgia. That's what Joni Taylor, SEC Coach of the Year, hangs her hat on. She says defense travels. That is the one expectation she knows she's going to get from her team night in and night out. And she always has a fantastic game plan. Remember, Georgia is one of just two teams all season that's been able to beat Texas A&M after they survived that scare tonight against Troy. That still holds true. But you know what? It's tournament time. Survive and advance. Chloe Lamb with the bucket. There has been no lack of effort, no lack of fight within South Dakota. I'm going to tell you, these Coyotes have, there's no quit in them. They forced 22 turnovers by Oregon. Foul on Kaya Watson. Claudia Kunzer will check in. She is their official hype woman, brings the energy on the bench. That's a big part of the South Dakota team as the Coyotes will get some applauses as they go to the bench. Hannah Shervin, what a battle and a fight from her. A double-double, 18 points, 12 rebounds. You could tell how bad she wanted it. Well, and you see her there hugging Monica Arndt, who was not able to play this season because of a knee injury. You know, this team is so tight. They care about each other. The chemistry is fantastic. But Oregon came in on a mission. They used that time between the Pac-12 tournament and the NCAA championship to get on the same page and to come out full force. They put up 25 points, outscored South Dakota in the first quarter, 25 to eight. Only gave up nine points in the first half. Yeah, that first half defense was impressive. And that's the way you set the tone when you start the tournament. And as a coach, you put a focus in on their defense so that there's no question. You come in, you know the scouting report, that gives your team confidence. Reagan Sankey at the free throw line. Oregon came out and flexed its muscles in this one. The first round goes to the Oregon Ducks. Just nine points allowed in the opening half. Oregon moves on with a 67 to 47 win over South Dakota. And they put one second back on the clock. Now it's official. Hannah Shervin battled with everything she had in this game. A double-double for her. South Dakota should be extremely proud of their season. The back-to-back -back Summit Tournament champions. Well, they came in. They battled. They got off to a slow start, but came out of the locker room at halftime. They put in a fight, but just the size. 